Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The title of our experiment today, experiment number eight, is thermochemistry, heat of neutralization. From the title, we can conclude that today we are going to carry out a practical application of thermochemistry, chapter number six. As we have explained in the uh, lectures, we said that heat can be uh, measured experimentally by calorimetry technique. And there are different or several types of calorimeters. The simplest type is called coffee cup calorimeter. This is the coffee cup calorimeter. And this device, or this is the calorimeter that we are going to use today. We can measure by using the coffee cup calorimeter, we can measure any type of heat we want the heat of any reaction, or most of the reactions. Today we selected a neutralization reaction. As we explained in experiment seven in acid-base titration, we said that neutralization process means acid-base reaction. When we react acid with base, this is called a neutralization process. So, so today we are going to measure the heat released by the reaction of HCl acid and sodium hydroxide uh, base. But to determine this heat, there are three steps. The first step is measuring or determining the heat of solution. From the title, heat of solution means the heat that will be released by dissolving a solute in a solvent. The solute that we are going to use is sodium hydroxide and the solvent is water. So again, the first step is determining the heat of the solution by dissolving sodium hydroxide. We'll take two grams and we'll dissolve it in one milliliter of water. This process is a physical process because as you know, solution formation is a, phys a physical process because the combination between solute and solvent is a physical combination. But even though this process is exothermic, exothermic means it will release energy. How many joules of energy will be released? This is our objective in this part. Okay, we'll carry out the experimental part, then we'll apply, as I will explain it during the uh, theoretical explanation, uh, we'll apply uh, the um, uh, heat formula, which equals Q equals M S delta T, mass times the specific heat times delta T, which is the difference in temperature. Then we'll convert this heat to enthalpy. How to convert it? We'll explain this, inshallah, during the class. So actually, to carry out the experimental part, two parameters or two, um, um, two required items. We have two required items. The first item is the mass of sodium hydroxide, two grams. The second item is delta T, which is the difference between the initial temperature and the final temperature. Once we recorded these two items, we can say that we finished the experimental part and we can easily uh, proceed to the theoretical part. Yeah, let's do it. Now the first step, we'll weigh two grams of sodium hydroxide. Just a minute, I'll bring the spatula. Two grams of sodium hydroxide pellets. Little bit more. Yes, it's one point nine seven two grams. It's not necessary to take exactly two grams, this will take a long time. So we assume that the mass is one point nine seven two grams. Then what I do. I will record the initial temperature. Here is the coffee cup calorimeter. Okay. I will take 100 milliliter of distilled water using a graduated cylinder. Okay. 
yes it's about 100 milliliter i'll open the coffee cup calorimeter then i close it here is a thermometer digital thermometer just put it inside and record the temperature the initial temperature is 24 we will wait just for a few seconds until the reading is stable it's 24.2 degrees Celsius right so the initial temperature is 24.2 degrees Celsius now what I will do I will take the sodium hydroxide and I drop it inside the calorimeter then immediately I close the calorimeter like this okay. it should be really closed because this is a closed system and isolated system as we explained in the class the calorimeters all calorimeters should be isolated why to prevent the releasing of heat outside it okay now I will try or I will start stirring like this until the whole amount of sodium hydroxide dissolved. Every 30 seconds, one minute, take or record the reading. The maximum reading approached or reached during the experiment will be the considerable one. Okay? The maximum temperature. As you can see here, I am trying to dissolve the whole amount of sodium hydroxide. This process is physical process. It's a solution formation, but it's exothermic. So what we expect now, we expect that the temperature inside the calorimeter will increase. Okay. Let's record it. Yeah, the initial temperature was 24 point, I think, 3 or 4 degrees Celsius. Until now, it's 25.8 degree, degrees Celsius. So it's continue increasing. So what I'll do, I'll continue steering. Then, every 30 seconds, I record the temperature until we got the maximum temperature of this process. I still observe some billets of sodium hydroxide that did not dissolve. Okay. Yalla. The second attempt, let's see what we we'll get. In the first attempt, the temperature was 25.9, right? Look, it's 27 point... point 0.4. Let's do a third attempt. Here, by the way, this hole should be closed to make the system completely isolated, but unfortunately, we lost this piece, so I am trying to put my finger here just to close it. But it will make no difference because, you know, this is a very short period of time. So during this time, I think the accuracy of the experiment will be acceptable. Okay. Last trial, because now the whole amount dissolved. Let's see if we'll get a higher temperature. The last one was 27 point, point 0.3 or point 0.4. Yeah, it's still increasing. Now it's a 28.1 degrees Celsius. 
So I'll do it just to make sure that everything is performed perfectly. I'll do it for one more time. Okay. One more trial. As you can see here, the, in, the whole amount of sodium hydroxide dissolved. Okay. Yeah, this is the last attempt. So, record the temperature now. It's a 28 point. We'll wait just for a few seconds to make sure that the reading is stable. Yeah, it's a 28.4 degrees Celsius. So this is the final, final temperature, that's it. The experiment is very easy, very simple. We determine the mass in the first step, then we determine the initial temperature, final temperature, everything is ready. Take these parameters, substitute them in the mathematical relation, Q equals M S delta T. S is given, the specific heat is water. M is measured, delta T is measured. Substitute them in the law, determine Q. After that, we will convert Q. This is a Q of solution, heat of solution to enthalpy of solution, delta H of solution. How? I explain that in the class, but I repeat everything, inshallah, during the explanation. Thank you very much. Wait me for the second part.